AMT Ertl's Pro Street 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B, coming up next. Hello once again Mopar fans and Pro Street drag racing fans out there. Welcome back to another unboxing video as we take a look at AMT Ertl's Pro Street 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B. Now this is one of those amazing model kits that came out in the late 80s, early 90s from our great friends at AMT Ertl back in the days when they were competing against Tamiya Japan and Monogram and Ravel for best built models of all time. This is, again is another one of these cool kits that you will want to see. But before we get into unboxing this, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. Now this kit's come out many times in the past, so I want to show you some of those great box arts. And then we'll take a look at what's in the box. So let's go down and check it out. Here's a far out street racer that's sure to get you in Dutch with the man. I of course am talking about the Pro Street 1970 Coronet Super B by AMT Ertl. Man, can you dig this cool, groovy ride. Here's the skinny, the dirty lowdown. This model kit is made by AMT Ertl and came out in 1992 to compete with the likes of Tamiya Japan for most bodacious model. All right, let's flip this thing up and get the skinny on it. So right here, of course, if we zoom in, you can see the model kit specifications for the Pro Street 70 Coronet. The type is a front engine rear wheel drive two-door hardtop. Can you dig it? Engine, 426 cubic inch Hemi with tunnel ram intake manifold, intake plenum, two four barrel carburetors and two pro flow air cleaners. Also includes separate cylinder heads, valve covers, intake manifold and cam drive to build a dual overhead cam Hemi engine. Features new seven piece pro street rear end assembly, transmission four speed manual. Wheels and tires, custom wheels, Mickey Thompson Sportsman tires. Exterior options, B-pillars, rear wing spoiler. Parts, over 100 groovy parts. Full colored decals. Paint and cement are not included. Mm. So this car is really awesome looking. As you can see, it's nice and sublime with a real slime green. And there's the end of course of the box. But check out this. Can you dig it? Includes Mickey Thompson Sportsman tires, big thick ones. Dual overhead cam Hemi engine, photo of actual engine, right on, right on. And of course, we have our detailed interior. All right, now let's pull a lid off this bad boy and see what's inside. Okay, we have the instructions, that decal sheet, brown, real groovy, man, right for the 70s. That's our body. There's our interior bucket. Here is that amazing Pro Street back end that we won't see until the 90s. We gotta wait 20 years for this back end. <laughs> anyway, okay, here's the glass. We have two, count them, two, righteous, three chrome sprues. This one's actually aluminum, but still, as the British would say, aluminum. I'm looking for the alu maximum. Okay, there's the hood. And here we've got our dashboard and the steering wheel. You can tell I look at this kit a few times. We got a light tan underneath here whole bunch of whoops whole bunch of parts trees two dashboards now this one parts trees of course are shared with another one of the Chryslers so we'll get into that in our review here there's the front clip for the car 
and maybe the rear. And then here's the Hemi, the special Hemi. And then we've got our tires right down here. Dig it. And then what else? Tail lights and mufflers. So I'll just get this out of the way and then we'll take a look at that groovy instruction sheet. After feasting my eyes on all that plastic, I'm getting some good vibes from this instruction sheet. So let's dig into it and check out the groovy goodness. So of course here we have the 1970 Dodge Coronet Pro Street. I don't know who drew it because I can't read this. <laughs> okay, it's from Chrysler. It looks pretty good so far. And of course right here we get this big write-up about the muscle cars. Okay, and of course all our important details like using your hobby knife and tweezers and cement. Can you get behind it? Building tips for the advanced modeler. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip these open and we'll zoom in and we'll take a look at each and every assembly. Okay, this engine is the bomb. We actually get two options in this kit. So we'll take a look at this. So first off, we have our basic engine assembly. So the two engine blocks include the transmission bell housing here. And then you get the actual standard transmission gluing together on the back. Both the engine and the transmission are two components apiece. The front cover, our water pump here, Hemi Orange. Same with our oil pan, our oil filter, and the starter here is gloss black. So they all go in just like this. Next up is our first choice of Hemi engine, and this is the standard Hemi 426. We've got our cylinder heads plopping down on our engine block, the tunnel ram intake manifold with our dual plenum right here going on top, cylinder heads chrome valve covers, and then our distributor will all connect onto this big engine block. Subassembly C is showing our fan belt and pulleys, the alternator and the fan all being hooked up together and then being put in here. Can you get behind it? Now here's the second engine and this one is even more groovy. This is our dual overhead cam engine assembly. This is a competitor that Chrysler was going to bring out to try to beat Ford in NASCAR, but I don't think it really happened. Chrysler couldn't get behind it. Anyway, you've got these alternate cylinder heads. And you can see their dual overhead cam. If you look inside, you can see the cams in there. One, two, three, four. This would have been a crazy Hemi motor. And there's our Hemi covers. And you can see that they've got the bulges here for the dual overhead cam. All that will drop on here. And our intake manifold will go right on the top in this valley. And then our distributor drops in. And in sub-assembly C here, look at all these pulleys and belts. You got this special one here that goes on to both ends of those cylinder heads. And then our alternators going on there. And there's our regular belts and pulleys and our fan here. And then we've got a ton of options for our Hemi here in the final assembly. You either have a choice of a regular air cleaner or the triangular air cleaners or a velocity stack. And you got a two piece carburetor top and bottom going on to your plenum here. You actually get two of these. So one, two. And then you got more power than you know what to deal with. And then here's one for the dual overhead cam engine. And of course you got your same three air cleaners and a single big carburetor going this way onto that intake manifold for all your power. And here's your chassis assembly coming up next. The engine bay assembly. So right here we got our firewall our windshield wiper motor, master cylinder going on, dual fuel pumps gluing onto the inner fender here, and then our washer reservoir going up top, and then the second inner fender. It says here to carefully remove this curved area and cut straight across for your front subframe to glue onto your Pro Street chassis. Right on. And here's the skinny on our front suspension. Tire preparation, you take your number 11 hobby blade and go around the ring here and carefully remove the web. And then here's your wheel back and a wheel retainer. 
And this is the Mickey Thompson Sportsman tire, the front one, and your front wheel. Squeeze them all together and you've got yourself a glorious set of rubber. Okay, and then here's the front cross member, the K member for our K suspension here. And of course we got our torsion bars to keep you bouncing. There's your king pins right and left, and your wheels will go on there in the front. And you got an anti-sway bar so you don't skitter around while you're trying to run from the man. All right, in chassis assembly number two, we've got our great big mill getting on the header so it can breathe, and then we drop it right into our chassis. And right here, we want to cool our ride down a little bit with our radiator hose and our radiator wall, and then add in some horns so we can hear the sound of the Roadrunner. And then we're going to drop our battery in, as well as an upper radiator hose, just to cool this big block, and add in the lower radiator hose so that the warm water can come back in and cool back down again. And finally, we got to get that rubber on the road with our rear suspension. So here's the bigger Mickey Thompson slicks, and you want to again cut out that web. Add in your deep dish back wheel here, your wheel retainer, your Mickey Thompson tire, and the great big front, uh, rear wheel sunken in. Hook them up to this little differential here that's got three pieces, the front, top, back, and bottom back. Then hook up your springs and squish your tires on. Add in that drive shaft to link it up. Put in your rear suspension arms and your mufflers, and you're ready to race the man. And here's the zone where you will be chillaxing right in this big monster mobile with these dual racing seats, the roll bar with braces. Here we got our console. You got your choice of shift levers. You can either use a pistol grip or the regular custom. Ah. And your steering wheel and your dashboard. So all goes into your groovy pad. And here in step four, we do a little glass preparation. It says windshield preparation note. Carefully saw or file 1 16th of an inch off the bottom of the wing vent area before installing the windshield into the body. So you got to cut this little piece out here. And then it should be good to go. You're going to get your car body. You're going to cut out the center brace. Put your windows up in here. Hook the whole thing into your tub and drop it right on your chassis. It says tape body, hood, and front pan together and paint as a unit prior to assembly. And next up we're going to do the slide as we go across the next two panels. So here we go with our hood preparation. And you'll want to chop open that big hole to allow that big blower to pop through with your carburetors. Note hood hinges are optional. Omit hinges if you wish to display with the hood down. Do not smint. There's our front grille and bumper, and you're going to paint the center here body color, but you're going to add in some nice, nice black wash in here to bring it all up. And then there's our hood going in, your optional hood hinges to keep that hood up. There's your front grille and bumper pops in the front, and the pan goes underneath. And now let's do the slide. The slide. Do, do, do the slide. Okay. You got our taillight panels right in here. You're going to add in your rear red taillights. Pop in from behind. There's an optional spoiler. That was that aluminum one we saw in the box. And then you got your, your great rear bumper and your license plate decal is going to pop right in there. And here you can paint it black and have Dodge up in silver. And finally, we've got our decal application chart here. And there's the front fender turn signals dropping in, as well as your big Super B stripe and your rear fender turn signal. And then you got yourself a real bomb. Can you dig it? And that finishes our look at this rag here as we check out the instructions from our 1970 Dodge Coronet Pro Street. So now we're going to keep on trucking with our look at this 1970 Dodge Coronet as we check out the groovy body right here that we've got. Now there's a lot of flash on here, flash in the pan, as you can see just along there. And uh, up around the hood and the top of the fenders are really sharp, man, so watch out there. <laughs> However, the proportions are right and it looks nice. You got this nice little scoop in the side fenders, a Coke bottle shape here, just like the real thing. There are turn signal lights that are really far out 
And then across the back panel, it's wide open with a little bit of a couple of ridges there. There is sort of the old promo style with the peg and post back here for your interior. So this is kind of like a modified old new kit sort of mixture. There's a couple of flash bits in here and some mold marks. You can get rid of those with your number 16 hobby blade. Got a nice door handle in there. There's the vents. The uh, Dodge Brothers were still using the vents in this time. They didn't have the hood that went up like in GMs. There's your windshield wipers. Pretty, pretty good molding and everything on the body. So uh, let's keep on trucking with the other components. Next up we got the interior tub for all your creature comforts right here, right at home. You can chillax and put that pedal to the metal. So let's just bring this up. Now I noticed one fault right away. We've got this big massive motor with a standard transmission and here we go again with the same old fault. You got the automatic pedal in the interior. So there's your gigantic brake and your gas pedal but no clutch. However, I do think we get the little button to push right there with our feet to get our high beams on. Anyway, there are some mold marks on that carpet there, which I have to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade. And then we've got our pleated seats here, just like the real thing. This is pretty crisp detail down those door panels, which is kind of amazing considering this is the interior tub. But still, overall, really quite nice. You're going to have to cut this big thing out of here and say hasta la vista. Okay, so we'll just drop this right down and take a look at the chassis. And here we've got our sassy chassis, which of course you're going to have to remove this piece of it. Now you can't see too much from up here, but if we flip this on the B side, you will see the amazing tubs in here. And then there's our little tiny frame for that little tiny differential. And then look at all that groovy detail on there. I mean, they didn't miss a beat with this. So, right on. It's pretty righteous. Alrighty. Now, Jeepers Creepers, we have ourselves at the top of that dual overhead cam Hemi sitting right here. As well as our bucket racing seats, our hood, front pan, dashboard and steering wheel. As well as the intake manifolds, the pulleys and a carburetor or two and our distributor all right let's take a look at these up into the camera so let's get this right out of here as well as these and there's our awesome dashboard looking just like the real thing only smaller and of course look at all those gauges here you get a speedometer and all these little bits and pieces of radio, vents, great things. There's only one thing that's a bummer, of course, is sink marks up in here. But a little bit of putty and your sandpaper, you should get that out lickety-split. All right, then we've got our hood here, which has a little Super B emblem right in the front. And if we turn it over, there's a lot going on under here. There's these little holes here. I'm not sure what th that was all about. But then we got the big hole you can cut out and let those carburetors breathe and flow in the wind. Look at this mat under here too. That's real groovy. Okay, and then we've got our front clip here. Not too much you can say about that. Just that it'll go on nice and easy. Mold marks in the back. So number 16 and it'll be gone. And then we got the steering wheel here, which is just perfect for the Chrysler steering wheel. Even has a horn ring. Looks just like the thing you would see in a Dodge for sure. All right, right on. And then we'll get into our parts tree here. So there's all those engine components. Let's bring this up. You can see here there's our dual overhead cam with the four valves in the cylinder head. Should make a righteous, righteous diorama display sitting on a bench. And there's the valve covers there. Look at all that nice crisp detail. The guys really outdid themselves on this one. So flipping it over, you can see your dual overhead cams. All four of them. Two per cylinder. Right on. This will get you out of the heat in no time. Okay, so moving this across here and bringing these back up to the four. 
we get, of course, the end of this portion. Now these parts are right off the hook, and I do believe they share these parts with some of the other pro streets out there, like the 1967 Plymouth and those kind of things, because here's the dashboard for that Plymouth. There we got our two mufflers, as well as the two mufflers here. That's interesting. These must have come from somewhere else. All right, there's our exhaust manifolds, the back of our differential, and our differential here, of course, and then we've got our uh, ra radiator, um, what do you call it? The fan shroud. Oh, I must be flipping my lid. Okay, your springs, your inner fender aprons, there's your rad support and your radiator, as well as the drive shaft, an additional steering wheel, the uh, front kingpins, your horns, all kinds of groovy things, your battery, windshield washer bottle. Here's the, the components for your Hemi. And there's extra intakes, so you could even have the uh, wedge here, and then your deep dishes, and that's for your air cleaner for the stock version. Then there's your extended differential. This is all, of course, for the stock stuff. So there's a lot of a lot of parts you can use in other kits, which are pretty righteous. Then your wheel backs and your regular standard Hemi. So let's just pull this up into the camera and check it out. Okay, dig all this detail. Really awesome stuff. Sure is righteous and groovy and bodacious. In other words, from the 70s. <laughs> okay, turning it over. There's lots of mold marks, but a little bit of putty and some sandpaper can get rid of them, as well as your hobby blades and files. So, yeah. And then, right there's your regular Hemi. Not quite as detailed, but they do have the hemispherical heads inside here. And then your yeah, standard transmission with your automatic floor pedals inside the car. Oh boy. Anyway, be hard to try to shift with that arrangement, for sure. Still looks pretty decent underneath. So now let's bring those back in the camera before we go a trucking again with the last bits of the light tan sprue. And our final light tan components here is, of course, our frame. And it's got the K member in here with our torsion bars molded in place. And then there's the front top of the K member with, of course, your tie rods in here and your front sway bar. And then you get your regular stock boring old exhaust pipes. And now here's something I can really get behind, and that, of course, is our groovy chrome tree. And we actually get 2.5, because this is aluminum. <laughs> anyway, so we've got all this nice chrome detail. There's a cover for our rear axle. Now this, of course, would be for the stock rear axle. Then we've got our cylinder heads here, as well as the air cleaners and the velocity stacks. Chrome shock absorbers, chrome wheels. There's our stock air cleaner, if you want to go that way and be a square. And there's your exhaust man uh, tailpipes, tailpipe extensions. And then we've got our center console and that groovy Super B nose and rear panel, as well as a bumper. And then here's aluminum bits. We've got an electric fan for cooling the uh, radiator and the engine. And then there's our rear suspension bits and this amazing little airfoil spoiler. So let's just pull all this up into the camera because we really want to see this. All right, check out all this cool stuff in here. Look at all those bolts and everything. How can you not love this? I mean, this is amazing. Really righteous. There is the Chrysler alternator. Remember to paint the sides of it with transparent red. And then there's your shifter levers and sport mirrors off the side here. Turning it over. It's good chrome plating on this thing. I'll give you, give you that for sure. Okay, and then there's our front grill. Check that out. That's amazing. Love it. It's got the headlights molded in place so you can't 
get them crooked. There's that rear bumper and then our Dodge right there with a the little Super B emblem. And then the center console, put some wood grain in there for sure. Oh, and even more shifter handles. So amazing. And then on the back, a couple little mold marks. But you can always paint the back here flat black. Clean those out with your number 16 hobby blade and you'll be styling. And then there's the aluminum. So you can see the uh, fan there and all their little components, the remainders of our components. Okay, so let's just tag this all back together here. And then we'll get a move on. And here we got something as clear as crystal, and that, of course, is our glass. And there's our front windshield and our rear window, and then our side windows, which are really amazing. And there's our rear tail lamps. Now, there's a lot of flash in the pan here, brother, but uh, you can always remove that again with your hobby knives. And one thing that was a real bummer is AMT never threw this in a plastic bag, so there's a great big scratch right in there. And that's just just total bogus <laughs> okay so there we go turning it over looks like the same piece just upside down okay and then there's our tail lamps and you can see some nice detail in here just like the real thing the real reflectors there you go right on now i wouldn't be a good sportsman without showing you these mickey thompson sportman tires and as you can see, you got some really big meat sitting right here. Look at that. That's where the rubber hits the road for sure. Check that tread out too. It's just taken to the max. Now, there's that web you got to cut out with your hobby blade. So be careful when you're going around not to gouge into the tire. And you can paint the uh, Mickey Thompson lettering here with a nice thin brush. Add some white paint just on the tops. And then there's the skinny fronts, which again are another bodacious tire. Groovy to the max. Alrighty, now let's take a look at that awesome decal sheet. And here we have our groovy decal sheet with another radical stripe going on here. With our Super B right in the center, as well as these little Super B emblems, which you can stick on your groovy ride. And there's the Mickey Thompson sponsor logo, so that everybody knows you've got the best tires in the world. And here's our Mopar Magazine license plate, as well as Georgia Killer B license plate. Buzz, buzz. All right, and then here's another stripe for your love bug. And that is our groovy decal sheet. And that finalizes our look at the AMT Pro Street 1970 Coronet Super B. So let's blow up the cheese and say peace out, home fry. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this amazing review of this awesome model kit. I hope you can find one of the newer releases out there. Maybe one of the ones that Dirty Donnie did. Anyway, that would be cool. If you own this car in the past, if you actually prostrated it, let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that you can keep up with our latest video releases when they come out. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.